Welcome back. So today is the first differential equations video where I'm experimenting using a node program. I'm going to try and use the new OneNote uh, because I think they fixed that glitch where they were just deleting everything that I wrote. Uh, so let's go ahead and introduce a new type of method, numerical method for estimating solutions to ODEs, which is called the Runga Kutta method or RK4 for short. Yesterday, we talked about Euler's method, and Euler's method was a very fast and very clean way to implement a numerical approximation to an ODE. Basically, it involved just taking little tiny steps along tangent line segments to get an estimate for the solution to an initial value problem. But when you have a step size which is relatively large, such as h equals 0.1 or h equals 0.05, there still has the potential to be quite a lot of error between the actual solution's value and the solution value that you predicted via Euler's method. Now you can improve that accuracy by decreasing the step size considerably, but depending on what you're working with, decreasing the step size can drastically increase computation time. So the runga kutta method, RK4, is designed to drastically improve accuracy without costing you that much in terms of computation time. It's a truly ingenious algorithm that not, not only uses the tangent line and the slope of the tangent line at a particular point, but sort of averages that slope with the slopes of nearby points to get an estimate of the function which is as accurate as the Taylor polynomial of degree 4. If you remember from Calculus 3, we could use a linear approximation to get a decent idea of what a function was doing, but the Taylor polynomial of degree 4 was a much, much better predictor of what the function was doing and RK4 simulates the accuracy of a Taylor polynomial of degree 4. Okay, so RK4 is designed, just like Euler's method, to estimate solutions to initial value problems. So we have our y prime, the slope of our tangent line, which is given by some function called f of xy, and then we have some initial known point y of x0 equals y0. Just as with Euler's method, the first three steps are unchanged. You have our initial point, which is in some sense our starting location. You have a step size, which is called h. And then you have a sequence of x values, which are equally spaced. xn is equal to your initial x, and then take n steps of size h. Now, this is where we differ from Euler's method. In Euler's method, we jumped straight to approximating our yn at the corresponding xn using a recursive formula. But in this case, the recursive formula for yn is much more complicated. yn plus 1 is equal to yn plus the step size, but then we multiply the step size by a much more complicated quantity than we had before. We multiply the step size by 1 sixth times a quantity f1 plus 2 times a quantity f2 plus 2 times a quantity f3 plus a quantity called f4. So what are these quantities f1, f2, f3, and f4? Those quantities are what we're going to have to define and figure out in the previous step of the algorithm. So first you're going to need to calculate f sub 1. And f sub 1 is just the slope of the tangent line at the current position, xn, yn. So this is the value of y prime at your current position. This was the quantity that we used, for example, in Euler's method 
uh, just directly in the bottom formula. What's F2? F2 is also equal to the slope of the tangent line, but not at the current position xn, yn, at a position which is sort of close to xn, yn. So what you want to do is take your xn and take a half step forward. Don't add h, don't add an entire step, add half of a step. And then add yn, and then plug in yn plus that half step, multiplied by the f1 that you found in the previous line. The quantity f3 is going to be very similar to f2. f of xn plus a half step. But in this case, our y value is going to be yn plus h over 2 times the f2 from the previous step. And for f4, it's going to be similar. But there's one important big difference between f4 and 3 and 2. In f4, we add a full step. Now, once you've gotten the values of f1, f2, f3, f4, you've gotten the values of the slope of the tangent line at xn, yn, and at these nearby positions, what we do is sort of take a weighted average of those slopes, and we use that weighted average in the recursive formula for y sub n. So I'm not going to go into detail and explain why this formula works and why it's so accurate. Uh, that's the kind of thing that I will reserve for your mechanical engineering courses. That's usually covered in mechanical engineering. We are just going to embrace this and accept it for the mathematical miracle that it is. And we're going to look at how to implement it. Um, I'm just going to implement it in Google Sheets. Once again, I've chosen this because I don't want you to have to learn a programming language or figure out how to use Octave for just a single assignment, basically. So we're going to implement it in one of the most basic ways I can think of, totally free and accessible. When you get into mechanical engineering, you will certainly be using MATLAB to do this uh, instead of Google Sheets. But if you understand the basics of the algorithm, it should be pretty easy to set up in MATLAB as well. So let's consider the initial value problem, which consists of the differential equation y prime equals 2xy, uh, with the initial condition that if x is 1, then y must also be 1. Now this differential equation is extremely similar to the one that we saw yesterday, so I've just gone ahead and skipped the part where we solve the ODE explicitly. Um, I, that's basically exactly the same as it was yesterday, it's just that a couple of constants are different. So we do that and we find that the actual solution is y equals e to the x squared minus 1. And then by plugging in 1.5 to that, we get the exact value of y of 1.5, which is e to the power 1.25. Now, let's go back to yesterday and use Euler's method with a step size of 0.1 to attain an approximation for the value of y at 1.5 so that we can compare what we get from the Euler method approximation to the actual value. We're going to calculate the relative error to see how far off the mark we actually are if we use Euler's method. So here we are back on Google Sheets. So here's my column of n's, xn's, and yn's. I'm going to start by filling up some n values. So let me enter 1 and 0 and then autofill. That should be enough. Let me enter my initial x and my initial y. Let me set up my formula for the x's. So each x is equal to the one previous plus the given step size, which was 0.1. And now that I've set up that formula, I can autofill. And I'm looking in particular for what's going on when x is equal to 1.5. So now I'm going to set up the formula for the y's. 
And I'm going to say that the next y is equal to the previous y plus the step size times the formula that we had for y prime, which was 2 times the x value of the previous step times the y value of the previous step. So having set up that formula, let's autofill. And Euler's method predicts a y value of 2.9278, approximately speaking, at x equals 1.5. Now let's compare that with the actual value of y of 1.5, which we found with our actual exact solution. And we can see that we're actually way, way off in this case, um, even with a step size of 0.1. In this case, uh, the relative error, if we calculate that, by taking the difference of actual minus estimate over actual, turns out to be about 16%. Nasty. So let's see if we can improve those results using RK4 instead. So off we go back to Google Sheets. Now in this case, the ends column, the X ends column, neither of those have changed. But the big difference between Euler's method and RK4 are the introduction of these four sort of intermediate quantities called F1, F2, F3, and F4. So I'm going to try to enter in some formulas for F1, F2, F3, and F4, which correspond to the formulas that were given uh, just a little while ago in the notes. Okay, so to calculate F1, we're going to calculate the value of F, the value of Y prime at the previous step. Now y prime was 2 times x times y, so I'm going to do 2 times the x of the previous step times the y of the previous step. And instead of just directly entering in 1 and 1, instead I'm going to try and set up a formula that I can eventually autofill by clicking the box that contains 1 and by clicking the box that contains y equals 1. So F1 is equal to the slope of our tangent line 2xy, 2 times the box containing x, 2 times the box containing y. Both of those from the previous line. Okay, now F2 is where things get more interesting. This particular formula is interesting enough that I want to take a quick look at it uh, on the side in more familiar mathematical notation before I try and type it into Google Sheets. So F2 would be what we get if we took the formula for Y prime, and instead of X, we had the X of the previous step, plus the step size cut in half. The, then instead of Y, we took the Y of the previous step, plus step size cut in half, multiplied by F1. So 2xy now becomes 2 times this first entry times this second entry. So this is the formula that I'm going to try and type into Google Sheets. So here I go. As always, it begins with an equal sign, and then we multiply by 2. So now I'm going to try and type in the x of the previous step plus half the step size. Now the x of the previous step is still 1, so I'm going to click the box containing that x, and then I'm going to add our step size, 0.1, divided by 2. Now I'm going to multiply that by y. So I'm going to, now I'm going to multiply that by the box containing the y of the previous step, plus the step size, divided by 2, multiplied by F1. So I'm now going to click the box which contains the value of F1 for our current step, and that value is given right here. That's equal to 2, and I'm going to click the box containing that 2. Close the parenthesis, hit enter. Okay. Now for F3, I'm going to do something extremely similar. 
the formula for F3 is almost exactly the same. So I'm just going to steal it, actually. Copy, paste. The only difference between F3 and F2 is that whereas F2 used F1, F3 uses F2. So instead of having C3, which is the box that contains F1, I'm going to delete that and instead indicate D3, which is the box that contains F2. Enter. And now I'm going to, again, do a little bit of stealing for the sake of F4. But for F4, there are two important differences. The first being that the step size does not get cut in half. So goodbye to divide it by 2. Goodbye to divide it by 2. And this formula also used F3 instead of F2. So I'm going to delete where F2 was, and I'm going to now put F3 in that position. OK, so finally, let's go ahead and enter in our formula for y sub n. So for y sub n, that is equal to the y of the previous step, plus the step size of 0.1 divided by 6, multiplied by. First, we have f1, so I'm going to click the box containing f1, plus 2 times f2, so I'm going to click the box containing f2, plus 2 times f3, so I'm going to click the box containing f3, plus f4. So I'm going to click the box containing f4. And so here is the value predicted for the y at the very next step. Now, it was a lot of work to enter in all those formulas, but we did it specifically so that we could begin to autofill. So I'm going to autofill all four of these f columns and autofill y. So clicking the F column, I'm going to autofill down. Clicking the column containing F2, autofill. Clicking the column containing F3, autofill. Then autofill. Then autofill. And as soon as you've autofilled all these values, they all sort of update at once and become accurate. And we can see now finally the value of Y predicted by RK4 at the location where x is equal to 1.5. RK4 is predicting an output of 3.4902. So right away, we can see a huge increase in accuracy between the estimate and the actual value. And if you go ahead and you calculate the relative error, uh, that works out to be, what was it? It works out to be 0.0034%. Isn't it amazing? So I'm absolutely staggered by RK4 and its abilities. Now this was a little bit of a trivial example because this particular function y prime was so simple. And in practice, uh, your values of y prime can involve some pretty intense functions that actually do take some uh, real genuine computation time to evaluate. Uh, sometimes evaluating the function for y prime involves doing like a, a computerized fluid simulation or something like that. Uh, in situations like that, reducing the number of steps that are required to get an accurate prediction is really, really valuable. And so RK4 is absolutely beautiful for that kind of thing. So this is how to implement it by hand, even using something as simple and basic as Google Sheets. You could also very easily implement it via a recursive algorithm, uh, a looping program on Python or something like that. And the RK4 algorithm comes built into MATLAB. In MATLAB, this particular algorithm is called ODE45. So that's already built into that software.